So you want to make a map in Halo. That's great. Now where do you start at? If you've ever forged a map in Halo and tested it within the forging community, you've likely heard some feedback. Things like, your ramp shouldn't be steeper than 45 degrees. Or, you should always have three different paths going into a room. Never have your map exceed X units in height, because that's too tall. In fact, it's very unlikely that you haven't heard some of these statements, and more. The problem with that is that map design is an art in every way. It's subjective at best, and the second people try creating rules and boundaries to abide by, is the second they put themselves in a 10x10 box of confinement to neuter their creative freedom. Before I mention a single thing about verticality or originality, pathing, weapon placement, the most important thing you can learn as a map designer and a forger is to not follow these rules. You see, the problem with these rules is that they try to be this catch-all philosophy that tells you what to do and what not to do in a map in a certain situation. But when everyone's idea of what a map should be contradict each other, these rules no longer make sense. See, Lockout and Guardian might be the two most revered maps in Halo history. Both are bridgework maps that have a bunch of pathways that connect small rooms to one another, but most importantly, both maps emphasize map control over everything. If you were to go into matchmaking right now and ask a random guy what he thinks is the best map in Halo history, you're probably going to hear Lockout and Guardian. But are these maps even good? I mean, playing Lockout and Guardian completely revolves around controlling the map geometry. The key to winning a Lockout game is just holding out wherever your team sees fit, whether it be Snipe Tower or BR Tower, and really just sitting there and, you know, keep shooting the oncoming opponents. The opponent's strategy to break these setups is just pushing continuously and waiting for the team holding out to make a mistake and then hopefully punish them for it. If and only if the attacking team is lucky, their push will break through, they'll be successful, and they'll take control of the Snipe and BR Tower, and then the whole cycle starts over again. There's little to no actual movement in a game of Lockout and Guardian because there's no incentive to move in the first place. Kill times are slow enough which prevents individuals from making successful pushes, and the sniper spawns in the tower being controlled. Any other weapons on Guardian Lockout just don't affect the outcome of the game. The entire strategy is to not move at all, but rather just sit there and hope the enemy team keeps piling bodies at your doorstep. Is that good map design? Take a look at Damnation from Halo 1 because it might be the exact opposite of Guardian Lockout. The entire metagame of Damnation revolves around this constant cycle, up and around the map, battling your way up to earn a better position, and then dropping back down to fight for power weapons and the whole cycle starts over again. Every room, despite only having one entrance and one exit, presents choices and positives and benefits and different ways to approach different power weapons and situations differently for you and your teammates that can shift the course of the entire match in just a matter of seconds. There's never more than 30 seconds of camping at the top of Damnation because if you wait for the that minute, the enemy team is rockets and camouflage fired three feet up your asshole. There's no time to waste. And then we look back to Lockout and Guardian, and the entire point is just to sit still and not do anything until the clock runs out. Or the entire enemy team makes a stupid push because no one has the ability to actually do anything on their own. Five minutes may go by with less than three kills because of the map setup and the power weapon placement. And we play this for fun. Oh yeah, and there's another rule you're gonna hear people tell you. They're gonna say, any new player should be able to learn a forge map quickly within minutes of their first game, otherwise the map's too confusing and doesn't orientate players well. Well why in Bungie's ball should the entire metagame of a map be revealed in the first minute? Doesn't that lead to stale gameplay and little replayability? Doesn't that show how little the map actually has to offer? I think the beauty of the map is in the details and the intricacies that reveal themselves over time, not the blatantly obvious. Put a new player on lockout and after the first match he plays, it's very apparent what they need to do, where they need to go because the entire metagame of the map is discovered in less than 10 minutes. Everyone likes Lockout because everyone is good at it. Damnation has been played for 15 years and there are still new strategies coming out since MTC has been released. People who understand the ins and outs of Halo 1 have gone so far to say as Halo isn't about map control. I know that sounds crazy because everyone thinks that Halo is about map control, but look at the unparalleled movement you're going to see throughout a 2v2 match of Damnation or Prisoner or Hang'em High. Halo CE was always about constantly moving around the map into weaker positions to fight for powerful items. And then take a look back at Lockout. Regardless of everything I just said, I can still see the beauty of Lockout and Guardian. After nearly 11 years of playing on the map and knowing every strat and every spawn and every line of sight like the back of my dick, I can understand why some people might like those kind of maps. So what kind of experience do we get with bridgework maps like Lockout and Guardian? You get a very slow paced experience and because of the longer kill times in Halo 2 onwards, there's a strong need for team shotting and pushing as a team to make or break setups. Many advocate for Lockout at a competitive level because it's easy to comprehend what's happening at any point. In contrast, if you're not entirely familiar with Halo 1, you're going to have no idea what's going on on the screen. It's exciting to watch a team set up on Guardian Lockout with a close score. Every kill is a landmark in the game, and every push is dramatic. It makes for a good viewing experience. But at what point do we value how exciting a map is to watch over how exciting it is to play? So this right here is the culmination of the entire video, because depending on how you look at it, Lockout could either be the greatest Halo map ever made, 
or the worst. It's that simple and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just emphasizes how subjective map design truly is and what some people prefer. Because no matter how much I prefer the depth and choice of a movement of damnation, I will never convince some people that Lockout is a bad map. And that's okay, because you know what, it doesn't have to be. I could be logistically sound in every argument that I make as to why damnation might be superior in every way, but that doesn't change the experience and joy that so many people had during Halo 2 playing Lockout. It's just philosophically different. See, the trouble is when we build our entire understanding of map design under what we see in these type of maps. Forge wasn't even introduced into the Halo series until Halo 3, and most Forgers didn't pick it up until much more recently. That being said, most Forgers also have very little experience and knowledge about maps outside the last few Halo games, which weren't exactly the best maps. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing, but it's very apparent where Forgers inspiration comes from when half the maps being pumped out on forging sites look like a carbon copy of one another. Design language in every Halo past Halo 1 have all been fairly similar to one another, with shallower verticality than the traditional arena shooter. And whether or not most Forges realize it, their maps reflect this language because for many it's all they know. That's when these rules get you into trouble, because when your entire knowledge of maps are based around the last few Halo games, chances are your Forge maps are going to look like the Pit, Midship, and Guardian every time. Similar scale, roots, verticality, weapon placement, it's become very apparent to me over the years exactly how uncultured many of our modern day Forgers are. And I don't say that to insult anyone, but it's very clear to me when I look at the map of a Forger who comes from a different background, say Unreal Tournament or Quake, because right off the bat, their design language changes. I see incredible elevation changes, just crazy interaction between weaving paths and narrowly suspended catwalks that tower over death bits, just crazy steep ramps. Things that most Forgers don't typically do, and when I see these things, it makes me happy because they're different, and what's the purpose of making a map if it's going to offer the same experience that every other map will offer? The more you free yourself of these rules, the more you can open up your mind and the community around you to new, incredible experiences. So don't be afraid to throw in a few man cannons and teleporters around your map just because someone said you can't. And who said you're not allowed to have a disconnected island that you can only get to by a gravity lift? You're free to do whatever you want to, it is your map after all. The trick is to just make it work. Don't let people tell you what you're doing is wrong, because chances are if they're trying to convince you to follow a set of guidelines and do's and don'ts and rights and wrongs for map design, they're extremely narrow-minded. You don't have to have your flag in a certain spot, you don't have to have your sniper wear it to weak. Just keep your mind open to everything, because there's no wrong map design philosophy. The more you see, the better you're gonna build.